In the ancient Greek comedy Lysistrata, one daring woman attempts to end a war between two Greek city-states by rallying the women of Greece to seize the state treasury and deny sex to all of the men fighting the war. It's one of the earliest examples of comedy from one of the earliest playwrights, Aristophanes, concluding with the men ultimately negotiating peace so that they may, once again, sleep with their wives. One of the latest examples came from actress and Supreme Court nomination hearing bomber Alyssa Milano, who, in direct response to restrictive abortion laws in mostly southern states, tweeted a rallying cry for all women to go on a sex strike until, quote, we get bodily autonomy back. A sex strike entails women banding together to refuse to give anyone sexual access to their bodies in order to achieve political or social gains. And this was not the first time that such a strike was called for. One of the most notable examples occurred in 2003 when Women of Liberia Mass Action for Peace called for a sex strike in an effort to bring an end to the Liberian Civil War, which the movement did ultimately achieve. But there were many other tactics used, and according to the leader of the movement, Lema Bowie, the sex strike was only useful for gaining media coverage. When we decided sex strike, every local radio station carried it. They had ignored us before, because you know what is sex is, what sells. So sex, obviously, everyone wanted to see who were these pathetic looking women daring to deny their husband's sex. Even though we did not succeed with the sex strike, we succeeded with a heavy media campaign because then international media, local media, everyone was scrambling to see whether the sex strike had succeeded. And when they asked that question, then we were able to now say, this is what we are about. Another notable sex strike occurred in Colombia in 2011, when the women of a secluded town organized the Crossed Legs Movement in an effort to pressure the government into paving the connecting road to their town. This movement, as well, was successful. But this movement, if that even is what it is, does have a few shortcomings. One is obvious. Because the issue at hand is controversial, unanimous participation is impossible. Any and all women who are pro-life are never going to participate in a pro-choice campaign. Which seems like a deal breaker right out of the gate. If many women do not participate, many men will not be affected. The logic of this sex strike is that the men in relationships with pro-choice women will be motivated to take some sort of action. But even then, men in relationships with pro-life women will, at best, do nothing, or at worst, act against the pro-choice men. In short, it seems like you need to get all women on board with this sort of strike in order for it to work. The second shortcoming is that a sex strike may only be effective in completely patriarchal societies where men are the only ones with power. But in the United States, there are powerful women, one of which is the governor of Alabama who signed into law arguably the most restrictive abortion bans of any other state. The effect of such a strike on women in power seems little to none. What does a powerful woman care if men aren't getting any? The third shortcoming is the goal. Milano's strike wasn't called to pave a road or to end a war. It was called to ensure that abortions remain legal and accessible, which is something that many people believe is immoral. So the strike is not merely a call to action, it's a call for certain people to change their sincerely held beliefs. A sex strike just doesn't seem like an effective way of accomplishing that, if it even can be in the first place. That transitions nicely into the fourth problem here, the notion that men will abandon their principles and their sincerely held beliefs if they're not getting laid. Which is offensive on its face, but perhaps does not compare to what it implies about women, that the female provides and the male receives sex. Not what you'd call a remarkably liberal view on the matter, and that wasn't lost on many people who may very well have been pro-choice themselves, but nevertheless did not agree with Miss Milano's strike for this very reason. The fifth, final, and perhaps the most amusing shortcoming of them all, advocating abstinence is precisely the argument made by many pro-life conservatives. Like, yeah, that was called marriage. That's called traditional sexual morality, where you don't screw people you're not willing to have a baby with. Sounds good to me. 
So promoting a sex strike until abortion laws are loosened would be tantamount to promoting a driving strike until speed limits are raised. It's no skin off the other side's nose. If anything, you're doing exactly what they want you to do in the first place. In conclusion, a sex strike can work, but only if virtually all women in an affected population participate, and only if men have all the power. It can only change actions, not ideologies. It patronizes men, it degrades women, and in the context of the abortion debate, inadvertently plays into the hands of those it's supposed to undermine. Perhaps the only thing that this tactic is useful for, and it certainly is, is getting people's attention. So if you ever need to put something or just add sex to it, it will sell. The media loves it. <laughs>